So in this video, we're gonna look at some tips and techniques for manually unpacking malware using X32. So in the previous video, we had a quick look at what X32 is and the various windows and areas of it. In this one, we're actually going to use the tool and unpack the Emotet sample that we've you know, analyzed and looked at in previous videos. So to understand um, how to unpack malware, we're gonna look at how the malware behaves. So we've touched on this previously in other videos as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, get Process Hacker running. Uh, it's just so we can look at the uh, processes that are running when I fire off the malware. And we're going to run Procmon as well. And this is just to demonstrate what's going on here uh, when the malware is running and how it unpacks itself. So I'm going to just run the malware as admin. And we can see at the bottom, there's the malware267.exe. It's created a new process, quickly uh, deleted the original one. It's then fired up this uh, loaded tangent that's now appeared at the bottom. And uh, what's happened here is the malware has unpacked itself in memory um, so it can run the unpack code. So let's just um, stop the packet capture, well, the uh, capturing event, sorry, on Procmon. And let's just stop, uh, let's just terminate the malware. So if we go to Procmon, and if we just do Control T to look at the process tree, uh, what we can see is we have the 267.exe, which we, you know, we saw had us launch from the desktop, and we have the location here. And then we have this child process that it's created. And again, we've mentioned this in previous videos, but it's just sort of a good setup for the uh, unpacking that we're going to do. But what's happening here is this is the um, packed malware. As it's run, it's creating a new process and that process is then being hollowed out and memory is being allocated within that process. The unpack code is then injected into the hollow process and the unpack code is then running uh, on the machine. What happens though is the malware is obviously enumerating, it's not running it from its um, persistence location, so it's then creating uh, this load of tangents um, process so like I say you can see it's copied itself here to Windows Syswire 64 it's renamed itself and it's done the same again here you know it's, it's, it's created a new process hollowed out the process and uh, injected that unpacked code so like I say that's the process injection that's going on so when analyzing malware and unpacking it you're going to look at the Windows API's the functionalities that are being imported by the malware in order to perform this activity so to create the um, new process, it's going to run, it's going to use a functionality or a Windows API, such as create process W or create process internal W to allocate the memory that the um, code is going to be injected into. It's going to use something like virtual alloc. And these are the sort of APIs that we're going to break points on and look at when we're unpacking the malware. So if I just revert this back to uh, my uninfected uh, machine, and what we're going to do is we're just going to drag the malware, the packed malware, into uh, X32. So again, this should be familiar if you've watched the previous video. And what we're going to do is we've got, first of all, we're just going to hit the entry point of the malware. So you can see at the top, the module is set to 267.exe. And just on the right hand side, next to the function call, we've got this, the entry point of the malware. So like I said, this, you know, it's going to create a new process, it's going to allocate some memory in that process. So, you know, there's a couple of tips I'm just going to show for how we can get that unpacked malware and then begin our reverse engineering of the unpacked sample. So one common technique that I like to do is I like to set a breakpoint on virtual alloc. Now to do this, if you hold Control and G, you can just type in the Windows API that you're looking for. And if I just hit Okay, on that hit enter, we can see now at the top, the module is set to kernel 32.dll and here we can see we're at the start of virtual alloc. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna to get to the return of uh, virtual alloc, so the end of it, so I can then see uh, where this was called uh, and see if I can get an idea of what's going on. So if I just hit these uh, jumps with return, we can see at the bottom, we have our return value and the breakpoint that I've already set on the left-hand side. So if I just go to breakpoints, 
Um, that's the breakpoint that I've set. I can remove that by right clicking it. Um, so on here, I could either, if I want to put that on now, I could do right click, breakpoints and uh, toggle. Or I can hold the function key and press F2 and we can see that now it's just been highlighted in red. So for breakpointing break on um, a Windows API of interest, and what we're hoping to see within this sort of memory being allocated is this unpack code. Can we find that within within the um, analysis that we're doing? So I'm going to hit debug and run. And we can see now the EIP is now pointing to my breakpoint. And when I hit uh, step into or step over, it doesn't matter which one, the module at the top has changed back to the executable code. And if I just scroll up, we can see where the call was made. So you see it says call EDI. Well, in the EDI register on the right hand side, we can see that virtual alloc is being stored in EDI. So when it's making the call to the EDI register, it's actually calling virtual alloc. That was where we were, and we've now returned to the instruction after. Again, if this doesn't make sense, this has all been explained in the previous video of uh, following functions and sort of the calls between various functions and Windows APIs. But what we can see here on the next few lines, we've got um, you see ESP plus 28, ESP plus 2C. Now these arguments that are being that are going to be used by the function and we can look within these by doing following dump and then looking at the address where these reside now in the bottom left hand side we can look at the dump space and what we're looking for here is like the mz flag that 4d5a you know the header of an executable and i'm just scrolling up here and i'm not seeing anything i'll just check the next one again i'm just going to follow in dump and look at the value and again these don't look like uh, executables to me so again they're not in the unpack code now there could be numerous calls to virtual alloc so you may have to run this a few times so if I just hit debug and run again we can see we then hit that breakpoint again for virtual alloc I'm just going to step over it and I'm just going to scroll up and again we can see this time there was a call to EVP and again on the right hand side we can see within the EVP register that's where virtual alloc has been stored so we have uh, another arguments here EDI plus 54 and if we do following dump and look for that address and if I just start to scroll up we can see what looks like a executable you can see there this program cannot be running DOS mode and there's our MZ header and in hex 4D5A so we've found a executable here which could potentially be our um, unpacked code so I'm just going to right click uh, within this space here and if we do follow in memory map, we can look in memory where this uh, unpack code's being stored. And what you're looking for here is if you look on the right hand side, you can see this protection tab and there's different flags here, um, E, R and W. So what you're looking for here is executable code. So you can see here our protection is ERW. And if we just scroll up, there's only other one at the top here that is ERW. So there's not many of them. So this is just a kind of a good indicator to look for your executable unpack code. You know, if we scroll down, we can see this some here that is executable, but it relates to, you know, a DLL. We're not interested in that. So again, it's just another pointer to look for to sort of show that you, you are heading in the right direction. If I right click on this uh, memory address space, I can then dump that memory to a file on my desktop. So I'm just going to call this to, I'll change the name to Unpacked. And I'm going to dump that to the desktop. And on my desktop now, if I drag this uh, new file that I've dumped into a hex editor, we can actually see we don't actually have a clean executable. There's a bunch of junk code in here because, you know, it's been dumped from memory. But if I just search for the, you know, the string MZ, we can see here, there's our MZ header and there's the you know the rest of the um, executable so what we can do is we can just select this if I scroll up and just select all that hit delete and click save on that we now have a clean uh, PE file that we can analyze um, it's created a backup file there um, so I'll just delete that but if I now open up say PE studio and drag in the executable we can see that we have our uh, clean executable uh, and the we can analyze this doing some static analysis uh, what we can also do is if I just drag this into hash my files 
and I'm just going to copy the MD5. And if we go to virus total, we can see it's recognized, it's recognized as Emetet. So, you know, we, we know we have dumped uh, an unpacked and malicious executable here. And, you know, we could now begin uh, reverse engineering this. So that's one way of unpacking malware. There's a, another tip I'm going to show you. I'll just go back to my VM. And originally I was going to do this on um, a LokiBot sample. And the reason was because I previously it was trying to, you know, this is going back a few months, I was trying to unpack a LokiBot sample. And it was just using that technique of just showing you there, there was multiple calls, you know, there was, I don't know how many there was, I lost track, but there was loads of calls to virtual alloc. And I was just hitting that API called numerous times and I needed a different way um, to find the unpack code. And this was actually a tip from a video on OA Labs. Um, so this is a way of uh, an alternative way of unpack, looking for the unpack code. So if I just again, let's just drag that onto the uh, X32. We're going to hit debug and run. Um, but instead of setting a breakpoint on virtual alloc, I'm going to set it on create process W. Now we could do some create process W or create process internal W. It doesn't really matter. And for the sake of the demo, I'll use a different technique for setting a breakpoint using the command line. So if I do BP create process W, hit enter. And we can see at the bottom, it says a breakpoint has been set. And if I go to the breakpoints tab, we can see create process W is there within the uh, breakpoints um, tab area, whatever you want to call it. So again, let's hit debug and run and we should hit that breakpoint. And we can see there it is, we have our instruction pointer pointing to create process W. We're within kernel 32 and you can see as part of this code, it moves down, it calls create process internal W. It'll then come back to the return and then return back to the executable code. Now we can look at what's being created here. So again, my address space here is 75B1103D. If I go to the call stack, we can see this value here. And if I just right click on this and do follow to, and just scroll up, this address, well, this um, instruction here that I've highlighted, we can see the call to create process W. This has already happened, you know, we, we're one step after this now, we're within the create process W um, code. But if you just look before this, what's being pushed onto the sat, you can see this command push ESI and push EDI. Push ESI is this word string that we've seen before in a previous video. But then we also have the process, you know, the string that's being created. So what's going to be created is this 267.exe that resides on the desktop. So this is what needs to be pushed onto the stack for the, before the function can be called. And if we look in the bottom right hand corner here, we can see the values residing on the stack. Um, so again, just a bit of an overview of what's going on here. But if I now go to the memory map, I can actually search within memory for, for strings. So if I do search, so if I do right click and do find pattern, I can search here for an ASCII string. And what I'm going to search for is uh, a string that resides within uh, an ex Windows executable. So I'm going to put this program and you can see it gives you the hex representation here, which is, you know, begins with 5468. And if I just make this a bit bigger and click OK, we can see it's found this hex string now within uh, the memory. So if I right click on the first address, you have a list, different list of addresses where it's found this string. So I'm gonna click on the first one and hit following dump. And then in the bottom left hand side, you can see the string there where it says this program cannot be run in DOS mode. And if I just scroll up, we can see the MZ flag there and the 4D5A in hex. Again, what we did before, I'm going to right click on that, do follow in memory map. And it doesn't look like that's the right one there, so that's fine. So if I just go back to the memory map, sorry, to our references, the search I've done. And again, we can just try this again. So following dump, let's scroll up. And we want to see if this is the uh, right one. And we now have some executable, uh, well, the protection is ERW, which is what we're looking for. It doesn't relate to 
um, a DLL, so the previous um, unpack code, sorry, the pack code that we're looking at. So let's uh, try dumping this to uh, a file and seeing what we have. So I'm gonna call this unpacked2. And I'll dump that to the desktop as well. And again, let's just drag that into HXD and let's just tidy this up so we have a nice clean uh, P file. And let's just delete that, save that. And if we drag this into hash my files, we can see it, mash, it matches the hash from the one we unpacked earlier using a slightly different technique. So I've got the exact same exact file. So again, another quick video there on how to manually unpack malware. So a couple of techniques we've used there, you know, some APIs to look for. In the next video, what we're gonna look at, I think we're best off doing the theory behind the stack memory, just so you can fully understand that before we start doing some real reverse engineering. And then we're gonna start taking this unpacked file apart and doing some real reverse engineering, which I know a lot of people have been asking for and are looking forward to. So again, thanks for watching. Um, if you're enjoying this, you know, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel and uh, share the love on Twitter. Thank you.